Hello. My name is Zhao Shun. This is the proper way to address someone in my country. I do apologize, Zhao Shun. Are you all right? Yes, I am. This is the only place where I can find some kind of serenity. Some way to remember my dear Matthew. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. Sorry, I don't know her. Okay. Are you on your own? Do you have any friends or family who you could be with? I have family and friends, but I need to be here alone. One day maybe I'll go back to them, but not now. I need silence, and I need sadness. I've seen many deaths in my life, and we all grieve in our own way. Some stay silent, or need to shout. Others need company, and some just can't stand it. Thank you for your sincere words, Dr. Reed. I sense you trying to help me, even if I don't quite understand why. Tell me how your husband died, Xiao Shu. Matthew died of the Spanish flu, like oh, so many yeah. others. It's a mundane cause of death these days, but for me it meant the end of the world. At this time, there is so... Oh. ...so little medical science can do to defeat this terrible epidemic. I'm truly sorry. The worst thing is not his death, even if it tears me apart. The worst is not to have seen it coming. To have lost him so quickly, even before realizing it. Did he hide his condition from you? Matthew was a smiling type, a, a happy sort. Everything that I am not. Did he laugh at his death to come? Or did he not realize what was going to happen? I'll never know. No. The Spanish flu may be the worst disease mankind has ever faced. Why are you blaming yourself? You don't understand. I didn't know he was so sick. I didn't realize the gravity of his situation until it was too late. As harsh as this sounds. Uh, oh, yeah. We are all equally vulnerable to this awful disease. It can take the strongest man in just a couple of days. I never said goodbye to Matthew. We never realized how bad it was. We laughed about it even. He always made me laugh. Now I don't have enough tears to shed. Aww. You realize you can't stay here forever, don't you? Eventually, you'll have to leave the cemetery. Why? Why should I go? Since this is the only place I can find peace of mind. But you're not dead. There is a difference between visiting the dead and staying with them. You sound like you're no stranger to the pain I feel. Let's just say... I, too, have a good reason to visit cemeteries at night. Please accept my condolences for your loss, then, Dr. Reed. Are you a doctor yourself? Is this why you feel so guilty for not saving your sick husband? No, I am not. But I still need to blame someone for Matthew's death. And who else, if not his wife, who did not see it coming? I'm a physician. One of the best in the country. But I was unable to save my own sister, Mary. She died in my arms. Why tell me this? Is it supposed to make me feel better? No. But I wanted you to know that you have done nothing wrong. Unlike me. May I ask what caused the death of your sister? You could say she was also killed by a terrible disease. A disease I have sworn to fight and cure, no matter how long oh, it takes. Oh, well, we're going Thank deep here. Thank you for sharing that with me, Dr. Reed. Maybe it's time we start to rebuild our lives, you and I. You should go home now. I think you're right. Cemeteries are for the dead, for they need silence too. Thank you for your honesty and your wisdom, Dr. Reed. Thank you for your company, Xiaoshun. Take care on the way home. Maybe I'll see you again in Whitechapel. 
Goodbye for now. Goodbye for now. Okay. Well, Let's she's going home then. That's the good. All right. I'm going to try to see if I can do this other quest that bugged out on me. Hopefully, I can. Okay, let's try this again. Yep, it's him again. And I've gotten this again. Okay. So. Okay, we've got it. Hey. Hey, look, I can now cure that stuff because I analyzed the thingy majigger. So, okay, let's see. Who needs what? I think. Uh, migraine. Migraine. I can't really talk to him yet, so I'll make a migraine for him. Uh, he has a migraine. He, well, actually. Who do you have? You have a headache. So, headache. We don't know what she has. So, one headache. Uh, one migraine. I guess just a headache and a migraine. Okay. Don't get me wrong, sir. I'm grateful for what you've done, but I've never felt comfortable with doctors. I'm certain you have your reasons, but let me assure you, I'm not like other doctors you may have consulted with. It is true. You risked your life to save me, after all. It would be impolite to refuse your counsel. E Goodbye, Mr. Thatcher. Try to take care of yourself. Gave him the heel. Any help? I always feel ill, sir. It's like I'm never right. Here, take I this. I can try to help your body heal, sir. But you must stop destroying it. The war destroyed me, Doctor. A gun, alcohol, and a bad temper make a terrible cocktail, sir. Goodbye for now. Okay. Even the flu Healed. is no match for the protection against malevolence. All right, dude. Good you're, evening, you're Mr. Evil, Whittaker. And His we know father, this. Whittaker, my son. I have found Samuel, your disciple. I am afraid I have bad news. I already expected the worst. He should already have come back. He is dead, isn't he? Yes, he is now. The epidemic took him. Samuel steadily made donations to our cause. He would have rewarded you himself if you'd found me in that awful cemetery. Please accept this money. Well... Your disciple, Samuel, stole from the dead in Stonebridge Cemetery. I have proof of his crime and proof of his death. No! Samuel was the best of us. So devoted. Nope, he definitely so stole from the dead. He gave all he had for the cause. He tirelessly preached the good word. Okay. He defiled the dead with his petty thefts. That's how he financed your misguided crusade. Think what you will. When this city is saved, he will be praised for his devoted fortitude. He walked boldly into the mouth of abomination. Your precious Samuel used you. He was an immoral crook. <sighs> if that's true, then he will be my burden to bear during this endless night. Well, whatever. I think that's it. I have had enough for tonight. Goodbye. Well, that's all done with. 
Dude, now I can actually talk to you. Good evening, sir. I'm amazed you made it back to the docks alone. Good for you. Well, I could say the same about you, young man. More to the point, who the hell are you? I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. And I am Archer Woodby. We saved this guy Please the other excuse night. excuse my assertiveness. I often forget I'm just an old prune. <laughs> what can you tell me about this part of town? People used to feel safe around here. They had the gangs protecting them. Now all they do is bicker and plot against one another. Hmm. Missing the good old days, are you not? Trust me, son. The longer you live, the less meaning your existence will have. You need to remember the days you still had beliefs. And what about the gang? Ironic Back for in a my vampire. day, people trusted the wet boot boys. We looked out for the docks and its families. Nowadays, they're just a bunch of greedy fuckers. You were a gang member. I was their leader for a time, believe it or not. Now these bastards act like I'm nothing. Not one of them. They owe me some damn respect. Huh. If you were such a respected figure, surely you have many interesting stories about this part of town. You bet I do, but make no mistake. I'm no rat, sir. Some secrets are best left buried. Oh, okay. Do you still know anyone? From the old days, I mean. Most of them are dead. I still give Miss Gillingham salutations. She doesn't remember me. She did once like me. Boy, <laughs> she was a beauty back then. Oh, yeah. I think... We haven't met her yet. I don't know where she is, but I have a quest related to her. Who would you trust around here? The owner of the Turquoise Turtle's a decent fella. Tom's his name. Sean Hampton's all right, too. Don't particularly share his religious views. He's quite devout, if you catch my meaning. Any remarkable new faces around here? Nobody. Well, there's that boy Rufus the Curse. I like him, despite the reputation he's made since his parents <laughs> died. Poor little bastard. I like this guy. I'm sure a district as colorful as the docks must have plenty of stories about strange visitors and creepy characters. So, you want me to talk about the sewer dog, don't you? If you don't mind. The sewer <laughs> dog is a bitch. Appropriately named, an old woman dressed in rags. She has an elegance, though, despite her ugliness. I saw her once. Scared the life out of me. Huh. Well, I guess that's it. Yeah, I don't think I have... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Have you always been so bitter? It's not bitterness. It's poorly masked disgust. When everything turns to shit, we all have to eat a spoon or two. Hmm. With everything that's happened recently, the war, Spanish flu, I must concede that these are difficult times. A few nights ago, I saw a kid eating a rat. He was right in front of one of those abandoned houses nearby. Just chewing on a living rat's inside. Oh yeah, who, we, it was so gross to eat rats. <laughs> well, tell me about these guys. Tell me everything you know about the guard of Prewen. Andrew never told me what they do. I do know they're vigilantes with military training. Access to some impressive firepower. And what is your personal opinion about the guard then? This guard of Prewen is just another gang preying on the young and naive. Preying on people like my boy. I know how it works. I invented it. Oh, and that's all his stuff. Interesting. Why did your son really join the guard of Prewen? If I believed in a higher power, I'd see this as punishment for my own sins. I deserve it for all the young men I enlisted back in the day. You don't believe in God, though, do you, Mr. Woodbead? So why did he join? Now I think about it. Andrew joined the guard, not to defy me, but to follow in my footsteps, to make me proud. Aww. So your son has left you nothing to explain his actions? No letter or message? Not even a note. I'm a proud man, Dr. Reed. 
but I would kneel and pray if I thought it would give me my Andrew back. Tell me about the wet boot boys, Archer. I want to know more. We were there for the families and each other. It was us against the world. We were vicious, tough, even cruel. But we were united. You sound like you were some kind of radical union member. Yes! Nowadays, the communists and gangs squabble over pointless territory. Sounds stupid when you say it out loud. Huh. Goodbye, sir. Well, he's... We're done talking to him, I guess. Okay, I think let's actually do story stuff, because I don't think I can do anything else. Knock knock. What? What do you want? Leave me alone. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I'm looking for Nurse Dorothy Crane. There is no Dorothy Crane here. Now goodbye. I'm afraid this medical leaflet says the opposite, sir. Really? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to close this door right now. Go bother someone else, Mr. Oh, this Doctor. Is to enter that house, I must Mr. discover who this man really is. Maybe I could start by observing what he's up to. Oh, are we actually going to learn how to do some, uh... Ah. Over here. Over here? No. Um... Over somewhere else? Hold on. She's over there. Um, okay, give me a sec. Can we go this way? No, okay. Uh, I'm a bit confused. Because I was pretty sure it wanted me to look at here. But it's not giving me that option anymore, so it makes me think I need to go somewhere else. Like, I have to be up somewhere and look at them. Nobody at home. Uh, at least this is tutorial, so it's gonna let me, you know, it's locked for a while, I guess. It's just a question of how I get there. I'm not seeing a way to like teleport up there is the thing. That's what I'm looking for. Like that's not a, that's not even giving me an option. I was sure at one point I saw some way to do this. Maybe I'm just crazy? Huh. Oh! I- I- It took it a minute, but I've stood here for a while and then it allowed me to do this. Strange man was at the door with a pass for our medical facility. I refused him entry. Darius, how could you know he didn't need our help? His clothes were too finely tailored to be for Whitechapel. Perhaps just a friend of that stray poet who is always about. Richard Nidercott? No, not of the same cloth, this man. I suspect some machination from that journalist. Clayton Darby? Is he still asking questions? Yes. I saw him drifting around St. Mary's Church. I swear he is tracking me just downwind. And then I'm just standing here like a creeper. I must talk to that journalist or the poet. They must know about Darius. Nearby the church they just mentioned. Perhaps I should look into it. I have talked to them both, so, eh. Let's see. Price, good quality. Come on, take a look. Don't be afraid. Oh, there is 
no protection against malevolence and trickery. Well, hi. You're going in a place that you, no, you don't normally go to. Or I guess you're just being here. Good evening, Doctor. Can I help you? Uh, got nothing there. I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are weary of strangers, and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? I'm a doctor, Mr. Darby. I care about everything involving public health and this epidemic. Are you sure you're not just concerned about the repercussions that a scandal involving a certain nurse crane from the Pembroke Hospital would bring? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. What do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. Hmm. He has no relatives at all? No, except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. Yes, I've already found him. He never goes out? No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him, but it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Hmm. Find the mailbox and the letter. Actually, that would be pretty interesting. Where is that mailbox? I know where Nithercott is. He's... I think he's back that way. Uh, so that would be the mailbox. This way. Over this... Which way? Find the mailbox. Oh, here we go. There is Petrescu's letter. My dearest and most beloved children, I'm so sorry you have not heard from me for months. The situation in London has been difficult. I know it may sound selfish and silly when you and my children are still living in a country consumed by war, but there's also a war going on here in England, a war against poverty and against injustice. This is a war I intend to fight despite my advanced years. This is why I'm writing to you today. I won't be coming back to Romania. That probably means I won't see you again before I die. Don't be sad, my darlings. You are grown up now, and you have children of your own. You know the sacrifice we sometimes must accept to make the world a better place. This one I must make now to feel useful one more time. I wish you a long and happy life. Kiss my grandchildren for me and remember that your father loves you all the way from this cold, damp country. I am as ever your loving father, Darius Petrescu. The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. And he's back here. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Nithercott. And good evening to you too, my good sir. Can I be of any help? I don't think we have anything to say to him. Hmm. Did you know the mute florist is a member of a secret society? No, I didn't. But I thank you for this information, sir. For it only enriches the mystery surrounding the precious camellia. I figured it would be that. Are you not curious? Is there not more you wish to know? That girl has not an ounce of malice in her. Whatever she may be hiding, it's certain to be for the benefit of most, if not all. I fear you are a hopeless romantic, Mr. Nethercourt. Guilty as charged, Dr. Reed. <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to ask him. May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. Hmm. I'm looking for Dorothy Crane, a nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious. But, sorry, no, never heard of her. 
What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. Interesting. And we got all this stuff about him. I'll leave you alone, sir. And he Darius has bronchitis. Is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. Interesting. Also, he has bronchitis, and we can do the medicine for that.